Hi, everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of Tiffany Talks. I am so excited about this episode because um, uh, Jenna Lear is going to be on the show, but she is a friend and she's also like a business bestie because we met at an event and she was sharing her story with me. And it's like, it's like my story, it's your story. And I'm like, we get to get on and talk about this. And uh, Jenna, uh, Jenna is very successful now. She's the owner of Blue Louis Studio. Studio. She's a brand strategist and she helps uh, purpose-driven entrepreneurs um, to grow their brands and position themselves as the go-to experts so they can consist consistently, guys, consistently attract dreamy clients. But that's not the essence of the story. Everybody has a success afterwards. What comes before the story? What comes before, you know, you start to get the clients and your business is up and running? Where is the mindset? Where are you at? So I invited Jenna on to kind of share the story of what it took from her to go from this idea stage to actually developing her business and getting the dreamy clients. And, you know, in this day and age, you know, small business is really the way to go, you guys, because it's everything is so up in the air. There's AI. You got to be able to sharpen your mindset and live into that creativity that you've been dreaming of all these years. So without further ado, um, Jenna Lear. All right. Hi. So nice to have you here. So um, we were having our conversation and first of all, she's an awesome brand strategist because just a group of us girls were talking and she really helped me like hone in my message of what I do. And you guys, I've been doing this for over 30 years, right? So um, to be able to hone in on the message and to just deliver it succinctly um, is really impactful when you're in rooms, when you're on retreats, when you're meeting new people and they ask you what you do and you're like, oh, uh, uh, uh. so that's what a brand strategist does, helps you understand you know um who you are what you do and who you serve correct okay correct. all right yes. so jenna tell us a little bit about like let's go way back to when mm -hmm. um you were thinking about doing this business and just take us back to where you were mentally emotionally yeah yeah so this is a little bit farther back than what we had talked about uh but just to speak into that uh, you know um, I always say, and I've shared this on other like podcasts and shows too, is, is I felt like I was meant for more, mm. right? Like I was in corporate, I was, you know, it's the, the cube farm, we was surrounded by polyester walls and I hustled my way through college. And I just got to a point where I was like, um, this is not what I thought it was going to be. <laughs> and there's something more available for me because I'm very purpose-driven. Like I want to be able to create impact. I want to see the results. And my corporate run just wasn't that it was just me tucked away in the corner. And, um, mm -hmm. it was a very out of alignment for me and how I wanted to really build my career and the work I wanted to do. So, yeah. Okay. So then you got that. Mm -hmm. so like, you know, there's a lot of people that are stepping away from corporate and they mm -hmm. want to start business, but what's the mindset? Like what was driving you? Where were you at? Like, yeah. Yeah. So I would say between that and then leading up to where we had kind of talked about, um, my mindset was, um, I think when you start your business, you're very much like, where can I get clients? Where can I get clients? Makes sense. You got to make sales to grow a business. Right. Okay. Um, but really the work is internal. So yeah. if you can really lean in and say, okay, who am I and what do I want? That was very much the space that I was in when I was growing my business. Um, and I was, I came to that moment because I was like, this isn't just about me collecting a paycheck. I have a paycheck at a at corporate, right? This is about me really leading into how I want to show up in my life, how I get to define my time and looking back. And now the one thing that's been consistent is I'm in it for time freedom. Mm -hmm. Um, and how am I building something that I'm proud of that I can really, um, put my values at the forefront time being one. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So I totally get it. So the conversation that we were having, like, I remember when I first started my business, like the Tiffany Roth Vic club, like I was online, luckily I had the popularity of YouTube, but I started this business like out of thin air. And I really had to learn along the way about like brand marketing and strategy and all that. But the real breakthrough for me was understanding myself and, mm -hmm. and, and, and to break through out of scarcity, out of a limiting mindset 
And it was so explosive. Like I created a whole leadership course around it to help everybody else called the mindset makeover, because it's just really, if you look in the mirror before you have a business and you don't really understand who you are, then you get to have leadership. So let's just talk about like when you were, because the conversation that we were having before, when I think you had the opportunity to do something different and, you know, like what was going through your head? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I want to piggyback off of real quick what you just said. It's, I think entrepreneurship and building your business is, is an invitation that we all accept. Um, and you have a choice to keep accepting to take yourself on and what that looks like as you continue to, you know, build a plane while you fly it. And that's not a small feat. So anyone like what I want to say, cause I've been through it. You've been through it, Tiffany, anyone that's choosing that, like we see you, right? Like it's not for the faint of heart. And, <laughs> um, and, you know, to make a long story short, I was in this space, like we were talking about, um, <clears throat> I had full-time work. I was freelancing on and off while building my business. I went full-time in my business because I didn't get the job that I applied for. And within that maybe six month period, I realized I have to, I get to make some shifts if I'm going to take this business from a inconsistent $30,000 a year business to what I really want is, you know, half a million, million dollar, million dollar business. The mindset that comes with that, the way of being, you have to shift. You have to shift to start thinking like a half million dollar or a million dollar business owner. What kind of decisions does that person make? And so for me, um, there was an opportunity that came about to go to a retreat with a mentor that I um, really connected with and aligned with. And um, you know, we can go ahead and give her an name, Amy <clears throat> Yuma, because like she's yes. our business coach and she's awesome. <clears throat> Guys, I really believe in supporting women, women's businesses. So if someone helps you and they had an amazing course that helped you shift, shout them out. So shout out to Amy Yamada. Okay. So yes. Go ahead. <laughs> yes. Yes. And shout out to her. I've been with her for years now. So yes, um, lots of credit in, in everything that she's helped me with, but, um, that was my first touch point with her was that retreat that she offered. I knew in my bones, I needed to be there. It was on the other side of the country. <laughs> And I remember having the conversation with her team about if it was the right fit for me. And there was always, there's always the money conversation, right? Mm -hmm. It's so much more than money, but let's just call it for what it is. It's the money conversation. Mm -hmm. And they said, okay, the investment is $6,000. And I slightly threw up in my mouth, right? <laughs> um, because I was barely bringing in a, you know, almost a third of that. Right. And, um, and they said, you have 48 hours to figure it out. Oh, and God. I, I look back and I'm so grateful because I said yes. And I chose to take myself on. Mm -hmm. And, and if I would have said that to like the partner that I was with at the time, or like my mom or something, they would have outright told me I was crazy. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm crazy committed. I'm crazy committed to my vision. I'm crazy committed to what this is. And I don't accept the lack of money for being the reason why I can't show up and shine my light and impact more people and grow a bigger business that I know is going to help more people. Yeah. So, so, so I took on the challenge 48 hours. I found $6,000 and I got my butt out to California for that retreat. And I was like, all right, I made it. I am answering. I'm raising my hand every time they ask like, who wants to go first? Do you have a question? It got to the point where they were like, Jenna, let's let someone else go. And I'm like, I, I'm invested, right? So yeah. that reminds me. That <clears throat> reminds me of when I first uh, separated from my husband because I was like one of those people. Like even though I had this big YouTube business, and I've spoken with you guys honestly about that. Like about in 2000. 2019, like my business was making like $30,000 a year. Like mm -hmm. luckily I was married and have to worry about it, but it was not like making a lot of money. And, and I borrowed $50,000 and I invested at least $30,000 of that into leadership training. Yes. And, 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 and it is so important. And from there, like the first year I tripled my income the second year, multiple six figures, just by investing in my mindset. And it was so powerful. That's what I'm like, you know, we got to teach this to everybody else. So that's why I created the Mindset mm -hmm. Makeover, which is a leadership course to help you shift your mindset. That's why I invited you on right now, because, you know, you're, you're living proof how when you shift your mindset, you shift out of scarcity. 
Yes. And that doesn't mean that you're making decisions not scared. You yeah. are. <laughs> like, yeah, you us are. Tell us about where you got the money. Like what happened? Like, so yeah, yeah what's the story behind it? Yeah. So to that first chunk of money, there's another part guys, but that uh-huh. first chunk of money, um, I tapped into my credit cards. Cause that's like, what's the path of least resistance, right? Uh-huh. So quick and easy. What can you, what can you find in 48 hours? Yeah. Um, credit cards. I, um, asked family members and then I tapped into the very little savings that I had mm-hmm. and that's risky. Yes. I don't know if I'll make it back. Yes. And I'm not a big betting person, but when it comes to betting, I will bet on myself yeah. because I knew, I knew I had to make a CEO decision. Mm-hmm. I can't keep making decisions at a $30,000 business owner level. I have to start making decisions at a half million, a million dollar business level. Even if I don't always know what they are, I intuitively trust myself to figure it out because I always have and I always will. So yeah. that's where that came from. So I love that. I always <laughs> say that. Um, Einstein, I I might be missing up the quote, but he was like, you can't solve a problem from the mindset that created it. And what you just said, like you want to have a bigger business and you can't create a bigger business with a $30,000 mindset. Not Mm going to happen. So for all of you guys that are thinking about starting your business or leaving your corporate jobs, we're here to tell you like it's on. Like it is not, it is on and popping and you got to be able to bet on yourself, level up your mindset, surround yourself with a good team. And yeah, it's risky. It's, it's risky. So like what, you know, Jenna was telling me like, you know, they, they come up with these numbers and you threw up in your mouth, but then what <laughs> happened after that? You did the court, you did that. Like, how did you, how did you manage to make it all work? And what did you tell yourself? Yeah. Yeah. So you know, at the time, I'll be very honest, at the time I had a partner that was not supportive. So I had to hide a lot of the decisions I was making. So it just made it even more like, what am I doing right now? Yeah. You know, even more like, am I just crazy? Um, but but I went, I went. And like I said, I, I rose my hand, I showed up, I invested and I trusted even when it wasn't like 100% trust, I trusted that I'm in the right place. Yeah. And so that allowed me to be present to really, you know, receive what I needed to receive. And I remember, and I was telling you, I remember this, I'll never forget this, this moment when I was at the retreat and Amy has a signature program beyond the retreat. And um, I sat down with her and I said, okay, like, don't, don't lie to me. <laughs> like, just be honest. Like, this is what, where I'm at. And this is where I want to be. Can you help me? right? Like I've absorbed what I needed to absorb here. And I know that there's more and I don't know how to get to where I need to go. You've done the things I want to do. Can you help me? And you know, Amy, like she has this way of just looking into your heart. And she said, I see the path for you. I see you and I can help you do this. Uh And so, um, and, and here's another money piece, right? Like that was an investment to step into that next step with her. And I love that we're being so real about this because I think that not a lot of people talk about it. So, Uh you know, her investment was up towards $20,000, right? Like, Oh, I just like pulled six out of my butt. Where am I going to find 20, right? Exactly. <laughs> and so, and so I told, I was telling you, Tiffany, I was like, you know, I cried immediately. <laughs> I was just like, oh my God. Um, because I had tried to apply for loans before. Like, I love that we have, you know, things in the world like PayPal loans and like Stripe loans, like access to capital is real when you're trying wow. to grow. Right. Um, and I had been denied before. So, you know, I left the conversation where it was with Amy. I went back to my hotel that night and I was like, I'm just going to, I'm just going to try one more time. Like, I don't know. I haven't tried in a while. I'm just going to try it again. And I applied to a PayPal loan and I woke up the next morning to, um, I think upwards towards like $9,000 that wow. they said that they would, yes. they would, you know, <laughs> give me. And I was like, if this isn't a sign, I don't know what is because literally denied like two times before. Wow. Um, so I went back the next day, the last day of the retreat, and I told Amy the story and I said, I, th- I think I'm in for this. And um, then it became, okay, <laughs> now I'm really on the line. I'm really on the line to show up. I'm really on the line to lead. I'm really on the line to create. I'm really on the line to come up with the money to pay for this investment that's going to support me in growing the way that I keep saying I want to grow. Yeah. So I love this one phrase that I don't know where I heard it, but if you don't pay, you don't pay attention. 
And Ooh, so, I like that. Yeah. So yes. some of those things, like when you guys are really wanting to invest to grow, it costs. And, mm. and, and the price that you pay of the money is what steps up your commitment it steps up your urgency. It gets kicks procrastination out to the curb so that you can really be who you came here to be on this planet. And, and speaking of retreats, you know, I do retreats, Jenna does retreats. We met at a retreat, right? Yes, they're <laughs> powerful. Like that's where it's like, you just <clears throat> burst into like all of this wisdom and you have women around you. Like when you said that you were with a partner that didn't support you, when I was married, I always felt like I had to hide my work. Like I mm. felt like, you know, I had to be there for the family. If I was working, I was taking time away from the family. And then, you know, so what I didn't have as an excuse anymore, I'm like, okay, Tiffany, like now what? You don't have an excuse of somebody I'm hiding. How are you going to show up for yourself? And we need coaches. Coaches always need coach coaches. And so that's why I invited Jenny in because when you pour into other women, right, you stimulate the economy. Like yes, everybody you do. gets to grow. Everybody gets to grow. So I brought her on here to share this story because she's great at what she does, but she also was vulnerable enough to tell us how she got there and mm-hmm. say with me, you guys, like it's embarrassing to say after being in business that I was at $30,000 a year and, you know, and I didn't know how to see my way out of it. And there's all these possibilities, but if you have a limiting mindset, it doesn't really help. Yeah. So you, yeah. you, you did it right. You I so, did it. And then also look for miracles. My new thing, look for miracles every day. Yes. And so there's things available to you if you look for them. So you found a need, mm-hmm. you found a need for the money. So when you find a need for the money, <clears throat> purpose, it shows yes. up. Yes. Right? Yeah. It's and so much up. opens up for you too. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so then now you did it. You were in what happened next? <laughs> yes. Well, like I said, now comes, now comes like the hard part, right? Like, it's like, I, you know, like I invested the money I'm here. I like, I'm all in <clears throat> now what? <clears throat> and, um, I came back to Cleveland and I, what I really want to say is, and I say this with like a grain of salt, I don't like networking, <laughs> right? Like I'm an, I'm an introvert by nature. I don't like going into a room feeling like, you know, no one sees me and like, I'm not going to get anything out of it. And it's just very vulnerable. And I know I wasn't the only one that felt that way. If we're going to give our precious time away from our families, away from our business to network, I want to get something out of it. And I know that there's such a beautiful community here in Cleveland, um, an entrepreneurship community here in Cleveland. What would it look like to um, really see the women behind the business card? Let's put the business card down. And so, yeah, like, who is she? What is she? What's her vision? What's her dream? Like, we lead with selling because that's how we're taught. But what if we led with connection? What if we led with seeing each other? Because to your point, Tiffany, I didn't do this alone. I chose to be a part of community every step of my journey. And that's what's helped me get to where I am. Uh Um, And so I surrounded myself with people who saw me, supported me, and I could see and support. So, um, so yeah, so what happened next? I boldly stepped out and created networking events for women entrepreneurs in Cleveland. They were free. Um, and it was for women to meet women. It wasn't for women to trade business cards. Um, okay, okay, I gotta stop you. I gotta stop you. I gotta stop you. So mindset, you guys, the mindset piece. This is why I teach leadership. She said, I don't like networking. I am an introvert. So I created a networking event. You guys, if you stay in resistance of your old personal reality, it will be the same old personality. So when you change your personal reality, you know what? I don't have to be the person that doesn't like networking. I don't have to be the person that resists. Let me create something that works. And so Mm -hmm. just imagine all the women's lives that you were able to touch by getting outside of your freaking comfort zone and doing the thing that you don't want to do, because that's what it takes. As an entrepreneur, that's what it takes. You got to do a lot of stuff that you get uncomfortable with. So you created networking events. And how did that go? Oh my gosh. Like, I'm going to echo what you just said. I, it was amazing. And every, you know, I set the tone. I got up every time we had a networking event. I said, here's who I am. Here's what I do. Here's why I created this. 
And I felt sick every time <laughs> because <laughs> I'm standing in front of a room of strangers who knows if they're going to receive me. Right. But I believe in what I'm here to share. Like my mm-hmm. message was more important than my fear. Yeah. And so, so that's what it was. And logistically, I, I went out and I created networking on my own terms. Right. Oh. Um, because I believe there was more to ha- be had. So Um, those were success. I was doing those monthly. And then I turned those into an event series because I saw, wow, there are women who feel the way I feel like we want to come to an event where we can connect, but learn something too, and really get something more out of it. And I'm an avid learner. If I can go somewhere and I can learn something, then I've spent my time well. Uh Um, so I got, uh, I, I turned the networking events into paid event series that was here in Cleveland. It was three events, a part of the series. Not only did we sell out, we oversold. So I was overselling tickets, so kind of like scrunching chairs in each venue. Um, we did profit from those events, um, minimal, but we did. So we found a way to be able to profit from the events, which was key. And then because the need was there, I said, okay, why, instead of just doing this sporadically, why don't we do this consistently? Because when we do consistently, when we get into a rhythm, then we build something bigger for ourselves and others. And so I turned it into a mastermind and that ended up being a reoccurring payment for me on the logistics side, but it ended up being a reoccurring impact for my clients um, every month. And we kept that full for two years. So, wow. I love that. So I like, it's the thing when you guys are in service to others, you level up yourself. So, you know, she was doing the networking and she goes, you know what, let's, let's take it to like a course that's more service. Let's Mm -hmm. take it, you know, to a mastermind that's more service because the more lives you touch, right? Mm -hmm. What you reap is from what you sow. So you're sowing all of these oats by, you know, pouring into people and leveling up and giving you your knowledge. This is a knowledge-based industry, you guys. Mm -hmm. What used to happen before you make money with your time, mm -mm, you make money with your knowledge. And when you share your knowledge with others and they're able to change their lives, like that's called the fruit, right? And we are fruit bearing. So you did that. You did the mastermind. Where are you at right now? Yeah. So it's been a beautiful journey. I can't believe it's all happened in four years. (laughs) Um, um, But, but that was really the start to um, learning that that was one of my core strategies to grow my business was events. I love it. Um, I've used multiple things throughout the years, but events have really changed the way I've grown my business and connected with people. Mm -hmm. Um, So over the last few years, we've gone on to host conferences and we've gone on to um, launch signature programs with event or community-based elements. Um, And it's been a really beautiful journey to kind of see how all of that has really helped me to connect in not only to others and serving and leading and choosing to to be the leader and choose to step into becoming, but um, how it's changed me and how I want to share my message and how I want to help people. So So tell me again, because I know I said at the beginning, but I want to hear from you. What do you do? (laughs) Yes. So I am a brand strategist. And what that means is I really, my particular mission is to teach purpose-driven women entrepreneurs how to grow their brand. And it's really about how to position yourself as the go-to expert, because I'd be willing to bet you are the go-to expert. So how do you own that? Um, So that you can consistently attract those dreamy clients, because I believe Your dreaming clients are out there. They're looking for you. And so how do you really stand up as the leader to say, I'm here to help you? Yes, yes. And so if somebody wanted to work with you, how would they do that? So um, in terms of my services or where to go? Yeah. Services. Uh, Yeah, so services. So um, really, I love where I make the biggest impact is really helping women entrepreneurs set the brand foundation. So that's where we go in and we basically work on the three pieces. Why are you the go-to expert? Because you're not the only one doing what you're doing in the world. Um, Who are you talking to? So you can't help 7.6 billion people, yeah. but you, you can help somebody. So really niching down and talking to those that need you, that you can make an impact for. And then the third piece is um, creating a message that's going to make an impact. So how can you really lead with a message? Um, and where, you know, elevator pitches are great. They're there to pitch. They're there to sell. But messages are there to lead a movement. And so what is yours? And so that's really the core of the work that I do and how I help women entrepreneurs build their brand so that they can create strategies that consistently attract the right clientele. 
I love that. I love that so much. So, okay. So we have gone on a journey, right? To, from being in a job that, you know, doesn't really serve you to trusting yourself enough to step out of that. What did you call it? (laughs) Cubicle? The cube farm. The The cube cube farm. farm. (laughs) Listen, I am not knocking the cube farm, you guys, because there is a lot of beauty in that, um, what is it? The reliability of your paycheck and, you know, all of that, your 401ks, there's beauty in that. But if there's something more for you, if there's something more for you, then you get to be courageous enough to live that life because we just have one life. So uh, Mm -hmm. through Jenna's story, she just actually illustrated what it's like to be go from there, to trust yourself, to invest in yourself, to believe in yourself so that you can then believe in others. And when you believe in others, you sort of multiply that energy and that's how your business grows, you guys. That's how it grows. So that's why I invited her on here. So you, they can find you if you guys want to get your brand ready and build a foundation, please contact Jenna. And where would they find you? Yeah, so you can go to my website. It's blue, like the color, Louie, L-O-U-I, studio.com. So bluelouisstudio.com. And yeah. um, that's where you can connect with me, um, reach out to me, learn some things. Um, I've got a couple strategies I'm going to throw up on there. And um, you can learn those workshops and those processes too. Okay, so I'm also going to put her um, her website in the description box. And I just... You guys know I have been talking about my retreat in Costa Rica, and this just really brings it home. Like she got inspired by a retreat, then she went to a retreat. She and I met a retreat. Retreats are like life changing. And the retreat that I'm going to do in Costa Rica, which I am so freaking excited about, it's called Revive Your Life. And I don't know if I got a chance to even explain this to Jenna, but revive means to restore to life to bring back to consciousness. Some of us are just wandering around trying to figure it out and never taking the time to get into a space of health and well-being and nurturing yourself to figure out what you want, right? To heal and restore and bring yourself back to a vibrant life. So that's the retreat in Costa Rica. There's also that link in the description box. So hopefully you guys will check into both of us because there is, there's so, there's, you never ever think And I want you guys to know that you never ever think that if you promote somebody else's business, it's going to take away from your business. It never Mm -hmm. is. There Mm -hmm. is no, there is no competition. There's only collaboration. You guys, there's enough for everybody to be successful out there. Just believe in yourself and step up. So I'm so grateful, Jenna, to you for being here. Um, BlueLouis.com, right? BlueLouisStudio.com. You guys check it out. And then if you're thinking about, you know, doing your business and you want to get your brand strategy. She's awesome. Like we were just in a group because we have an accountability businesswoman. Because again, you got to have your team. You got to have your team. Mm -hmm. Coaches always need coaches. So we coach each other. And, you know, she helped me with my brand. And I've been doing this for a very long time, just kind of getting succinct. So, you know, there's always a next level that you can go to. So check her out, you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you think that this message or this video will really support someone else who's thinking about starting their business and kind of stepping out, please share it. And remember to like and subscribe to the channel. Hit notify so you can get notifications of all the workouts that we do and all the Tiffany talks and you can be in the know. All right, as always, I say thank you so much, Jenna. And my motto is we are better together. Jenna, I'm gonna teach you the handshake. So you go like this. That's all of us, all the fingers on the hand all over the world. We are better together. When we're together, we are stronger. So say it with me. We're better. Better. Together. Together. Thank you guys so much. That. Thanks for tuning in. All right, check into the description box and check her out, Jenna Lear. Love you. Bye. Bye. See you. Okay, bye.